presentation is telling a story, and any good story has imagery. All the pictures and multimedia you use in your presentations should directly relate to the subject matter on the slide. You should never use a picture as filler or just as decoration. The pictures you use are going to clarify your idea, and since vision is our strongest sense, they will probably be the first thing your audience will remember about your presentation. So for a statement on this pain reliever, we're going to want to find an image that has something to do with relief. As with color, your image is going to set the emotional tone for your slide. Look at these three examples. Okay, so we've decided to go with this image. What should we do with it? Many people decide to stick a picture off to the side of text as if it's framed in its own little box. This is fine for a beginner, but a little boring. If you're going to do this, space it evenly near any other text elements. By rotating it slightly, you can achieve a slightly more interesting look. One way to powerfully place an image is by using it as your background. Larger images are more impactful. Use any large blank spaces in the photo as space for your text. By cropping certain parts of an image, you can create a perfect shot to accommodate for your text and message. When using this method, it's important to remember the quality of your image. Resolution plays an important part in how grainy your photo will be when enlarged. The pictures you decide to use should be of high enough resolution that they don't appear blurry when you make them larger. A standard PowerPoint slide is going to be the same size as your computer screen, something like 1024 by 768 pixels or 800 by 600 pixels. Optimally, if you choose to make an image your background, it should be this size, if not larger, to accommodate for cropping if need be. Before we leave the topic of images, I'd like to point out some things that you should avoid when placing pictures. Don't make images too small. Images you can't see are useless and don't help send your message. Don't randomly place an image. Put genuine thought into where you put them in relation to other elements in your slide. Don't use a pixelated or watermarked image. If you're going to make an image your background, make sure it covers your background fully. Avoid distorted or tiled images. Avoid clip art. Make sure your background image isn't too busy and distracting. This may hide your text. All right, now that you know a little bit about pictures, let's talk about data images like charts and graphs. Charts and graphs are visual representations of data. Because they are essentially pictures, they are a great way to make a lasting impression. With diagram slides like these, it's important to reduce the visual noise. Here are some suggestions on how to do that. Use simple, non-textured backgrounds to avoid obscuring your data. Stay away from excessive shapes, textures, and 3D effects. Though these may work on some occasions, they tend to add to visual noise. Refrain from decorative items. Reduce your data to only the essential. Anything that doesn't prove your point is non-essential. Emphasize your message with contrasting colors and values, or include a declarative statement instead of a title that puts your data into a simple, understandable statement. That covers the concrete elements of a presentation. Next, I'd like to go over the conceptual aspects of space.